Hi, I would like to welcome everyone to the Partsource Executive Webinar Series. Today's presentation is titled Maximize Value for Your Organization, Six Ways to Focus HTM Labor Capacity on High Value Activities. Before we begin, I'd like to review a few housekeeping items. First, you have a control panel. It's located at the top or side of your screen. You can minimize or um, expand this panel. Second, using the control panel, you can submit questions using the question portion. We will answer questions at the end of the presentation. If your question is not answered, we will respond to you individually after the event. And last, all registrants will receive um, a link to the recording after the webinar. This information will be sent to the email address with which you registered for this webinar. And now please allow me to introduce Brennan Stice, Vice President of Business Development for PartSource. Brennan is an innovative, collaborative executive with broad healthcare experience across the U.S. He has consistently demonstrated with a proven ability to build strong rapport and establish lasting relationships with leaders at all le levels. Recognized as a great listener, Brennan has led countless HTM teams to higher functioning, more effective programs. He's helped teams save millions of dollars, improve collaboration, and increase culture and morale. Now I'll hand it over to you, Brennan. Before COVID, our industry was pressed more than ever before to evolve and to change. And, and certainly, I would say now that that's accelerated, our commitment, um, what I'll call the part source commitment, is to continue to evolve and support the HTM community as well. We're, we're highly focused on uncovering ways to opt optimize supply chain budgets, improve and, and create more capacity in the talent and the, with the teams that you have. And then beneath and as a foundation of all that, utilize data and decision science to make great decisions. Driving a digital transformation in, in healthcare and more specifically in the hospital medical device supply chain is critical. Uh, and we at PartSource spend our days and our nights and our weekends working with teams and partners to decrease cost, improve quality, and, and overall increase the resilience, resiliency of your teams and your processes. Uh, and that's important more than uh, it ever has been as, as healthcare has become more complex with increased levels of service, different types of support, and much more compliance. Uh, today, our, our part source uh, enterprise or executive solution architect, Jason Beam, will go through this and highlight areas of opportunity where HTM teams can shift resources to maximize high value activities and expand the effective capacity of their department. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing and working with Jason for, for a number of years, and I've always considered him to be one of the brightest and more uh, progressive leaders in our space. Uh, he brings uh, positivity and, and enthusiasm that is, is uh, contagious, and um, most importantly, he's helped lead and create teams that have done some really incredible things on the cost, quality, and, and efficiency space. Um, from a background perspective, Jason is an experienced director of supply chain and clinical engineering with a demonstrated history of working in the hospital and healthcare industry. His skill sets include medical devices, team building, management, medical device connectivity, and biomedical engineering. As a strong purchasing professional and operations leader, Jason's background in Lean Six Sigma, people management, budgeting, analytics, clinical operations, evaluations, project management and program development is a wonderful addition to our part source team. Uh, and he's been able to help serve our, our current part source pro customers. And then also as a great resource to, to others evaluating our, our solutions. I'd like to now pass the mic and uh, welcome Jason to our conversation today. Thanks, Brennan. Uh, that was a pretty in-depth uh, introduction for me and in, in my experience. Um, so uh, welcome everybody. I think I know most of you that are on the call here today. Um, I've met you, worked with you in different areas, different times, things like that. Um, a lot of you know this about me already. Um, on the screen is just a little bit of my background where I've been. I've spent time in the OEM world, the ISO world, and most of my career in the in-house provider space. Um, so this is about the experience that I'm bringing to part source and to our, our customers. Um, so today's Today's topic is really maximizing value. And what we've been seeing across the country through our customer base is, is there's a, a real push to decrease labor demand on lower value activities. Um, you know, customers are, 
or have implemented AEM programs or are implementing AEM programs to try to decrease that labor demand um, and also right size the service that they're offering. Um, you know, people are, are evaluating alternative strategies more and more, um, like like outsourcing PMs is an example. We've seen a lot of a lot of opportunity to outsource infusion pump PMs. You know, driving lower cost, better completion rates. You know, and, and taking all that that time your teams are spending searching for pumps potentially um, to do the PMs off their plate and just having them all done at one time in one fell swoop. Um, along those lines, with outsourcing PMs, um, you know, like identifying depot repair opportunities and other other strategies like that for the lower, the high volume, lower, I guess, valued equipment, and maybe it's not lower valued, but it's it's the the more monotonous, the the you know the central distribution types of equipment, the SCDs, the pumps, the all that stuff that's really time consuming, and you don't really need. The highest level of expertise to complete those tasks. Um, you know, for the part source pro customers on the call, sourcing and purchasing um, activities can really eat up a lot of your team's time. Um, and you know, from the part source pro program, um, that that by utilizing part source pro, you can decrease your labor demand on those sourcing and purchasing activities for parts and service dramatically. Um, so those are these are a few of the ways that customers are evaluating. Um, opportunities to decrease their labor demand. And these are also ways that source can support you as well. Um, so what do you do with that, that decreased labor demand? Well, it leads to increased labor capacity and you can shift the focus to higher value activities. Um, you know, like alternative service strategies is one that, that more and more customers, more and more health systems are, are looking for. Um, you know, kind of goes along the lines of the outsourcing, some of the lower end equipment, PMs and service. Um, but with this increased labor capacity, you may have more opportunity to, to evaluate your current strategies for supporting the equipment and actually leveraging that capacity to implement strategies that you've been thinking about for a while, or maybe you haven't even thought about them, but there's other strategies that you'd like to implement. Um, you know, another way to utilize that that increased labor capacity is to insource service. You know, as, as HTM programs mature and develop, insourcing service off of service contracts is a great way to improve the response time with that on-site resource, uh, reduce the cost. You have a known quality, a known quantity in your your service engineers. You know what to expect from them, how they're going to deliver, how they interact with your customers. Um, so, you know, you get all those benefits from insourcing service, which if you can shift some resources and support that. Maybe you can offset the additional headcount that you would you would be requesting otherwise in order to do those types of activities. Um, and then the, the last thing is something that, that uh, you know, I think a lot of programs would like more time to, to focus on. And it's really aligning with your organization's strategic initiatives and goals is how I look at it. It's, it's becoming more integrated into, into what the C-suite's interested in with cybersecurity, with project management, with capital planning, device integration, all of these types of activities that, that I think a lot of the HTM programs would love to be more involved in and have a better, better handle on. It's just been you know strapped for resources and trying to figure out how to support those while supporting all of your other day-to-day -day activities. Um, so that's that's what we've seen recently across the country and what we're focused on here um, today. Um, so going along those lines, um, maybe an addition an additional area here is um, time and material spend. Uh, we've been seeing that that's that's a pretty large opportunity in a lot of health systems. Um, you know, when it comes to managing time and material spend, like how many vendors is your is your team managing or using to provide these on-demand services? Are you using OEMs and third parties? How many of them do you have? One specific one, or do you have a bunch of them? And then how do you manage all those vendors? You know, do you have a vendor management process? Do you track their quality? Um, do you know if the if the technician is certified and qualified to be servicing whatever they're showing up to service? Um, and then, and then, along with time and material spend, I know for me personally, you know, following up to get the service reports and invoices and chasing all those down, and then 
addressing any issues that arose between the clinical end users and the service providers, um, that can become a lot. Um, so, th so this one here, time and material spend, is a, is a pretty large opportunity across the, the customers and the health systems that I've been exposed to. Um, and part of this, this is gonna be a little bit of a sales pitch here, but uh, you know, part source on-site service can address all of these questions related to time and material spend. Um, it's an extension of, a, of the parts offering, the platform that you're all used to if you're pro customers and if you're prospective pro customers, um, you'll, you've probably seen demos of this and you'll be gaining those benefits as well on the parts procurement side. But the parts source on-site service is an extension of the parts source pro for parts into the service space. So you get enhanced real-time communication. There's, you know, you get the quality management and the vendor management, the transparency with data and tracking of all your invoices and service reports. I mean, it's just a way to streamline this and make it a lot easier to manage, reduce the administrative burden of managing time and material spend and ensure that you, that somebody's managing that supplier and provider quality and their performance and that you don't have to try to figure out how to do that yourself or dedicate resources to do that. Um, you know, it's, it's really the same premise as Part Source Pro with a simplified supply chain integrated approach and then the transparency with the data and analytics so that you can drive you know all the benefits that you want from it and have visibility to, to how the service is actually being delivered so this one here along with those other areas on the previous slide of maximizing um, labor and value is a great opportunity here i think in a lot of health systems that, that we've worked with um, so to, to take a, a little bit of step back and look at this from a, a higher level, you know, the evolution of HTM programs is they, they pretty much all have started at one spot at some point in history, right? And, and as you develop your in-house programs, you know, there's different levels of, of this along your journey. Um, so we've kind of, we've depicted this here as, you know, a very basic biomed program maybe getting started off and most of your programs are well past this um, but this would be an entry point um, so it's a partially in-house biomed model um, you're mostly focused on the biomed equipment meeting regulatory accreditation and compliance requirements and just in doing essentially the basics you know to keep the program going and to keep the hospital compliant um, as we move across the spectrum you know you'll you, you'll grow into a fully in-house biomed model. You'll be doing value analysis on your biomed modalities and probably insourcing the majority of them, you know, with the exceptions being probably some of the robots and the, the specialized proprietary equipment out there. Um, from there, um, it's, it's common for people to get into low-end imaging and start evaluating how to insource some of the general rad, ultrasound, and those types of modalities. Uh, then you move into full contract value analysis. So here, you know, you, you're probably working more with supply chain, um, negotiating strategic MSAs, uh, you know, supporting your in-house model and, and advancing your imaging capabilities until you get up to the advanced in-house model where, you know, the, the really mature programs out there, um, which several of you have, and I know that personally, um, you know, you're, you're supporting all your high-end imaging you might have some strategic vetted contracts that deliver some of the, the desired deliverables you want from vendors, um, but you're not just buying their off the shelf, full service, shared service. You, you know what you want, you know what you need, and you're negotiating for those things. Um, also, these, these more advanced programs are typically more involved with, with strategic initiatives. Capital planning um, is, is a big one. HTM programs can deliver a lot of value to capital planning and in budgeting um, with you know understanding the, the total cost of ownership, uh, the replacement cycles, you know, what equipment delivers time and time again, what equipment isn't quite so robust, and that and just really helping understand the utilization of the equipment. Um, so this is uh, this is kind of how we view the journey of HTM programs. Um, and Colleen, is this where we had a, a poll question to come up? Sure. So we're going to we're going to start and this is a three part question to everybody on the call. So we're thinking about your HTM as a whole and then you'll see um, a second and third question. where you are talking a little bit more about your specific biomed and imaging team. So I'm going to go ahead and launch. 
And if you take a moment to look at those questions and, and select where you think your team is, again, number one, like overall, and then two focused on the biomed and then three focused on imaging. We know everybody's a little different here. So again, take a few moments. Don't be shy. This is, this is an interactive. <laughs> And I would assume the reality is there's some ebb and flow probably in your organization since you've been there. It may have been in one state and you may be working toward another. So again, this is just food for thought for now. So we'll give another 30 seconds for folks to yeah. get their response. In. It is in this, this, uh, as we view this journey, you can look at it from your overall program, but you might have pockets within your program at different locations or whatever that are at different phases in this, right? Due to geography, due to staffing, due to whatever it may be. But these, this model could be different within your program for various sites, modalities, things like that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and share results here. Just again, food for thought for the conversation today. So you were right, uh, Jason, we've got some advanced folks and we have some folks all over the board. Got somebody in every category for all, except the partially in-house biomed. That's the only one we didn't see there. So um, again, thanks for answering guys. And it kind of gives you an idea of uh, where everybody is um, that are that chose to share that information here today. And we'll include that information on the follow-up just so you guys can share that in-house as well. Um, so as we, as, you know, as we look at how you mature across that journey, um, the, we look at it as a landscape scan. Uh, so you know, to really to mature your programs and understand where you are and where you wanna go, you need to understand the vision and your goals um, and how you aligned with your organization's initiatives um, and where they're going and how you can support those strategic plans. Um, the next phase that, that we consider to be important in, in identifying how to mature these programs um, is your operational structure. So, you know, understanding how you dispatch and manage your work, um, how do you procure service and parts? What's that process look like? Is it efficient? Is it effective? Uh, are your policy and procedures conducive to supporting your mission and your goals uh, within your program? And then, you know, also, you know, how do you manage your contracts? Do you have a repository? Do you actively negotiate those? Is your visibility to them, um, you know, are, are they maybe, maybe bought and kept within the, the clinical departments? Um, and then, and then how do you manage your time and materials, right? So with your in-house teams and balancing that with third parties and with OEMs, how do you determine what's, what's effective and what's the right structure? Um, from there, it's important to understand your resources. Uh, you know, so your staffing levels, what their training, their competencies are, um, what kind of capacity do you have available? Are there opportunities to to uh, become more efficient and really understand the workload and how things are getting done to, to increase your capacity of your teams um, to support some of the other things that you might want to do. And then how do you, how do you provide your program with support and analytics? Um, for me, having a database administrator was key for the in-house programs that I've run. Um, you know, it takes that burden off of your, your managers, your leads, um, to really manage that database and keep it clean and keep it useful. Um, and then finally, how do all of these things relate to your service strategies? You know, how do you determine what goes on contract and what doesn't? Where do you think you need shared service and why? Um, how do you decide when to use a TNM strategy? And, and really, how do you go about evaluating equipment, determining service levels, um, and, and I guess gauging your, your risk tolerance for, for different equipment, uh, different equipment types based on location, mission criticality, you know, end users needs, 
all of those types of things so that you can plan your OEM, third party and in-house strategies to really optimize your overall program. Um, you know, and going through those those landscape scans and really understanding your strategy, um, you, you drive all these outcomes, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, and, and they're probably all things that you guys are striving for every day. Um, but improving your customer service, increasing quality, increasing productivity. A big one is uh, increasing your equipment availability, the clinical availability. So it's a it's kind of a shift in terminology i guess from uptime but it's really is the equipment available when the clinicians need to use it to treat patients um and i think that's almost more important than any uptime metric because as you you all probably agree the uptime metrics are really hard not to meet um as they're defined today the uh you know other results here that come out of doing this assessment and really understanding your program and how to maximize value is cost savings which a lot of health systems across the country after COVID have a, have a push for cost savings. You know, the, the finances haven't been as strong during COVID and, and health systems are trying to rebound from that. So cost savings plus increased revenue is, is what they're all looking for, what a lot of them are looking for. Um, and then, you know, being that alignment with the organizational goals and initiatives can really promote the HTM program to get up to that C-suite level, have a seat at or run the capital committee. Um, you know, and just be more involved with the strategic initiatives, which goes a long ways for supporting the growth and development of the, of the HTM program, and also shining a light on all the value that the HTM programs provide to the organizations. Um, you know, the, another thing that, you know, it's been around forever, but, you know, depending on your C-suite, who comes in, who's got prior experiences, they may want to consider outsourcing an HTM program. Um, if, if you understand your vision and your your landscape scan and you know how to maximize the value you can deter that outsourcing and, and make it so that it's not even not even appealing to a you know a chief financial officer or a chief supply chain officer to try to save some money um, so all of those things together add up to having strong long-lasting um, and value-adding htm programs uh, so Shifting gears a little bit, we're going to show you a couple examples of, of ways to um, maximize value. Uh, this one here is specifically looking at infusion pump PMs. And we've actually done this assessment for several health systems now over the past few months. And what we've been seeing consistently is the labor that the health systems are spending with their in house teams doing the pump PMs costs more it does to outsource the PMs and have them all just, you know, have a team come in, do all your PMs at one time, have them all done for the year, you know, and then they can come back the next year and do it again. It's driving cost savings. Granted, it's soft savings, unless if you're able to reallocate these FTEs that are freed up, your team not having to chase down all these pumps um, and, and do the PMs. Uh, so like in this one example, it was 40 to $70,000 of soft cost savings. Uh, and three FTEs of capacity were freed up by not having to chase around their infusion pumps. Um, so we've seen this type of output and uh, or consistently across every health system that we've engaged with and explored this specific opportunity. Um, I wish I had had that opportunity when I was running in-house programs. It probably would have made my life a lot easier. Uh, the second scenario here is, you know, there's, I'm sure you guys have all heard of different insurance strategies and and things like that. Um, but a capitated risk strategy can add some value if you're trying to develop your program. Um, you know, if, if you've got clinical end users that are really risk adverse to moving away from an OEM contract, and you guys might wanna train up and hire staff to support those in-house to provide all the benefits that you know that you'll provide. Um, so these types of strategies here can guarantee savings from what you're spending today while still providing you access to OEM service, ISO service, in-house service of your choice, um, and also can account for you know, app support and other things like that within these programs so that you're not missing out on, on what's critical to your programs. Um, you know, the, the chart on the right is, is a view if, if you were to do nothing different but change the way you pay a vendor, um, you could realize guaranteed savings um, right up front 
and still have you know the same OEM service if you desired. You could increase your savings by using third parties and in-house support um, that we all know. And the the chart on the right hand side of this is the same the same contract base, but it, it's showing how you can use this to support adding resources as in staff and training to grow your teams, to grow your offerings um, and deliver guaranteed savings plus additional savings because you'll be doing more work in-house and the in-house labor is, I'm sure you guys are all well aware, is a lot less expensive than vendor service labor. Um, so this is these models are out there. This is one that PartSource is exploring on how we can support your needs and how we can add, how we can deliver all of the required value adds, app support, you know, access to keys, the remote monitoring that everybody's looking for um, within a program like this and still guarantee your savings and help you develop and mature your programs. Uh, the strategy works. Um, I have personally used it twice in my past at two different health systems. And I've also shared it with a couple other health systems that were being faced with potentially being outsourced. Um, I was, you know, helping them justify their in-house program and showing the value that they can add. And they were able to keep their programs in-house and move them forward. Um, so these are these are strategies that are proven and work. Um, and you know, we all have, we all know the horror stories of insurance, and we all have the stigma that's associated with them. Um, you know, having to file claims and track all the paperwork and all the administrative burden that goes along with them. Um, but we believe that, you know, there's ways to do that and streamline all that and, and basically deliver an easy button for the healthcare systems you know, that would be interested in, in exploring a, a program or a strategy like this. Um, from there, let's see. So what you've kind of been through, all, right, all of this is led up to these are services that are offered by PartSource. Um, it's our advisory services. I was brought on board to, to head this up and to work with customers and really help identify ways to maximize value. Um, you know, and it's in the true PartSource sense with it's transparent, it's not high pressure. It's, you know, if it doesn't make sense, I'm not gonna pressure anyone to do that, you know, that whatever that opportunity may be. Um, but it's this is a value add for part source pro customers. There's no fee for it. So even if you've got a fairly mature program and you just want another set of eyes to take a look at things and see if we can identify some other opportunities to improve productivity, quality, value, um, all of those things, this is a free value added offering for our pro clients. Um, for those of you that are prospective pro clients, this is a value that you will get with your part source pro agreement you know becoming a becoming a member of that program um so we just want to get that out there for you guys make sure you're aware of it and encourage you to take advantage of it it's no risk it's no cost it'll come back with an opportunity map and recommendations for you to decide if you want to pursue them or not um the opportunity assessment so essentially what you get out of this is an executive overview, um, you know, we can cover those topics under there. The service strategy analysis, we can compare OEM contract to ISO to in-house, help you make make uh, your decisions and, and provide recommendations for that. Uh, we can get into staffing models, uh, your labor capacity, qualifications of your engineers, um, you know, what your capabilities are, and also provide vendor assessments. Uh, and then finally, of course, you know, ROI is, is usually king with most of these things when getting approval to move forward with different programs. So we will provide ROIs and performas and all of that kind of information as well. Um, the one thing I, I would like to think, like a lot of people look at this as trying to boil the ocean, right? Especially if we're trying to get into your entire program. Um, if you're interested in engaging with advisory services, we can, we can definitely look at your entire program help you create a three to five year strategy. Um, but we can also just focus on, on specific modalities or areas of your program that, you, that you'd like some help with or that you want another set of eyes to take a look at. So it doesn't, it's not an all or nothing type of offering. Um, let's see, so this one here, yep. If you're interested in advisory services or exploring this further, 
you know, contact your account manager if you're a pro customer today, or you can email Colleen. Um, she can route you to where you need to get. Um, and if you're not a pro customer today, Brennan is a great resource for you to, to reach out to contact and he can help you along with this, with uh, exploring these options as well. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, so to everybody on the call today, we're, we're going to go ahead and get ready to open up for Q&A. Um, I think the exciting thing that Jason shared um, about the offering in these six areas of opportunity where, where you might be able to think about how you can utilize your labor um, in a better way for your organization or key how he showed one, one scenario where it might be all across the board in a multi-year program, as well as a separate scenario that's more focused on one particular modality, something that you could bite off and chew and digest and then think about, you know, what can we tackle next? For those of you who've joined us before, I know um, Jeremy Cook did a similar presentation talking about where he analyzed specific um, situations within their organization. And, and you, you guys um, in the industry might be familiar with him. So um, that presentation is available on, on Parts for Site, again, where he took individual scenarios kind of like the, the pump modality that Jason spoke about today and said, you know, does this make sense to bring in-house or outsource? Does this a second scenario, um, should we change parts or, or keep one the same? So again, we're gonna continue to share the information as our cl clients provide and share with us. We're gonna continue to share that with the community. That's what we hope to do with you guys and, um, and continue to bring the information to the table. So. Without further ado, if you have a question um, uh, about anything we talked about today or, or anything that we presented for previously, just go ahead and type that question in the Q&A um, section on your control panel. Colleen, just, just a comment for the group. Um, I think Jason did a nice job describing it, but, but certainly, as I stated in the beginning, our, our stated goal is to be uh, a support team, a support technology, a support platform for HTM teams. And, and I like to, uh, many of you probably heard this from our CEO, Phil Satimi, his comment to teams is put us to work, um, put Jason to work, put, put me to work. Uh, and this is a great opportunity for us to do that. In the past, it's, it's really been more about technology and, and put our technology to work, which is still a great solution. But if there are desires to expand the capacity of the team to free up resources. I haven't talked to a team yet that isn't down one or two or 10 or 15 resources um, and, and they need that extra capacity. Talk to Jason and, and talk to our group and our team and we'll help you understand different strategies that you can employ right now to, to create that capacity. So, so I'll, I'll, you know, as questions are coming in, I'll just leave you with a thought, put us to work. We're, we're, we're pleased and happy to be your partners in this space. Uh, one of the questions was, I noticed on-site services. Are you guys going into that? Yes. So we we launched on-site services probably about, oh, it's probably about six months ago now. Um, we've got a national grid of third-party and OEM service providers that's available for on-demand service. It's accessible through partsource.com. Um, you can, you know, if you're ordering a part and you need a part installed, you can select need cert needed installed. If you'd like to have PMs completed, you can schedule PMs. If you need same day or next day service, those options are available. Um, and if you want to get, if you want to learn more about that for your specific region, um, again, reach out to your account managers um, and we can get you a, what that service grid looks like for your specific region and for specific modalities. Just to add to that, Colleen, um, our strategy is not to, to come in and, and replace or, or outsource a, an in-house program. As, as we've always stated, we, we want to be supportive for those groups. So this isn't a, a comprehensive service offering. It's comprehensive in, in the way that we are using our technology and, and building a grid so that we, we plan on being helpful to you and your teams in a variety of different ways. But, but I view this as a you know, as, as you're trying to execute strategies around creating capacity with your teams, sometimes you don't have enough 
guys or gals on, on the bench to do PMs, or maybe you're not using Depot and, and, and you need that extra help, this is a, a point solution that allows you to do that. Um, this question is about time. Um, I guess how long would it take to connect with you guys, meaning us, uh, on the, um, to do an evaluation or to, to talk about a program like this? Not long. Um, if you're interested in doing that, we can just reach out, let us know. Uh, we can schedule a quick call to understand what you're looking for um, and then go from there. Um, these engagements, depending on what they are, obviously a longer three to five year strategic plan will take a little bit more time, but it's not, it's not like a six month endeavor. Um, you know, so depending on what you're interested in, we can, we can work with you as quickly as within the next couple of weeks and wrap up opportunity recommendations, you know, within a month per to probably six weeks, um, depending on the scope of it. Thanks, Jason. So again, to everyone on the call, I'm not seeing any additional questions coming through. You can add a question in the Q&A. We have a few moments here. Um, again, keep in mind the journey map, where your organization falls within that, um, whether the HTM team as a whole or one of the other areas specifically. Um, one of the things I've noticed in, in, in communication in the HTM community lately, talking about staffing, talking about um, succession planning, talking about um, interns or how to obtain new team members internally um, to kind of backfill as folks retire or as people move on. So I think it's key to think about where your organization is on the evolution and, and how you're gonna address things like that. I've also heard about cybersecurity, a, um, a home equipment that's in the home now because of more home care, because of COVID um, and some of these other topics that are coming to mind. So just Again, keeping those in, in the horizon and how your team will address um, those. And we'll continue as we um, uncover information and, and um, lessons learned, as well as um, you know, best case or, or great case scenarios, we'll continue to try to gather the data and, and put those forth to you guys in, in webinars and or documents that we can share. So um, with, with, that, with that, Jason or Brennan, did you all have anything else to add? Just uh, thank you for your time and hopefully it, it gave you some insights into something or some other support available to you guys as HTM leaders um, to reach out and put us to work as Brennan said. <laughs>